Today is August 8th, 2023, and there are still not any Pokemon Game Boy games on the Nintendo Switch. Let's talk about it. I realize that I have dated this video from the literal get-go, and I'm okay with that. Back on Pokemon Day 2023, we were a month away from the Nintendo 3DS eShop getting shut down. The eShop was the only way to play the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Pokemon games on current hardware that could connect to Pokemon Bank and Home. Everyone was talking about how the big Pokemon Day announcement had to be the release, or at least reveal, of the Game Boy games being put on the Switch in some capacity. Some thought that Game Freak would release them as their own download from the Switch store to cash in on some extra funds. Others thought that it would be featured as part of the Game Boy or Game Boy Advance games on the Nintendo Switch online service announced right at the beginning of February. It seemed like the perfect alignment of all the stars with the eShop shutting down and Game Boy games being on the Switch. It was just a question of how they would be shown. A few days before the Presents, the Pokemon account tweeted a quick video showing the Presents was coming. It featured the first 18 Pokemon of the Kanto decks. It seemed like red, blue, and yellow were shoe-ins for release at this point. Then the Pokemon Presents on Pokemon Day 2023 began. And there was nothing. Not even the Pokemon TCG game being released. One of the games that was shown to be on the way to Switch Online. Not even a mention of it. About a month later, Pokemon Stadium was released on the Switch Online. The game that was advertised originally as being the way to play Pokemon on the TV using your Game Boy Pokemon. It released, and still nothing in terms of Game Boy games. And here we are today. Pokemon Presents, Pokemon TCG, and Pokemon Stadium 2 are being released after the Presents is over. And nothing. We are still living in a world without the Game Boy games on the Switch. And I'm sure not the first person to talk about this. But I think that's a problem. For starters, there's no official way to send Pokemon from Gen 1 and 2 to the home and bank now with the eShop closed down. The option wasn't even available until 2016 when Gen 1 was released for the eShop, but having been available for 7 years and now not being available is kinda sad. Unless you downloaded the games before the eShop shut down, you're out of luck if you want something from the original Kanto and Johto. And with no official way to get these games now, people are gonna emulate. Sure, people already emulate and will continue for the foreseeable future, but this isn't helping Nintendo's efforts to fight emulation. I would absolutely drop money on each of these games if they're released, even as individual games on the Switch eShop. And I'm not the only person that would do that. Emulation is nice, but when I can just grab a controller and turn on a console instead of booting up my computer, I'm gonna choose the console route every single time. Not to mention the portability. And Pokemon Stadium is just meant to be played in tandem with the Game Boy games. I had an entire video planned detailing the specific issues, but never really found a way to make it a full-fleshed video, so this is where I'm going to talk about that stuff. The rental Pokemon in Stadium are just not good. The higher the evolution stage, the better the stats are, but boy you're not going to get some good moves out of it. And if they do have strong moves, they're the ones with low accuracy. If you want the good moves, you're going to have to take the bullet and not get better stats for your Pokemon by choosing a lower stage evolution. It's not a terrible problem at the beginning of Gym Leader Castle in the Stadium Cups, but the higher up you get, especially in round two, you're just at a massive disadvantage. The other teams are straight up better in all areas. The only way to feasibly compete with them is to actually send in your Pokemon from the Game Boy games. And if you are able to struggle past the Elite Four, which I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't do without using save states between battles. I had to get incredibly lucky in the Elite Four battles after multiple attempts to beat half of them. After you beat them, you get a gift Pokemon. Here I got a Kabuto. But that Kabuto is literally just data in a game that I can't use anywhere else. I can't send that Kabuto over to anything. And that's just disappointing. And let's say with just rental Pokemon, you're able to do the insane feat of getting all 151 Pokemon in the Hall of Fame. You get special Psyduck with Amnesia, an awesome Pokemon with a great move, especially in Gen 1 where the special stat is one thing. An awesome Pokemon that you can't use. 
that's not fun. It just feels like with Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2, we're playing half of a game without having access to the Game Boy sections. As a kid, I would play the mini games literally all day long because I couldn't make good teams in the Game Boy games to send over to do the battles. Now, I play the mini games for a little bit, then I'm kind of done with the game. And Pokemon is just without a doubt one of the most important game series in Nintendo's history. I would argue the most important handheld series in their history. I think the Switch is the best system to celebrate Nintendo right now. And without the Game Boy games, it just feels like we're missing that one little piece. I seriously hope this video becomes outdated down the road, but until these Game Boy games are released on Switch, all these points will stand. And I just personally want these games so badly on the Switch. This has been what I would call a decently thought out rant, a little different from other discussion videos that I might have done before. Maybe we'll do more of this, maybe we won't. Anyways, leave a like, comment what you think about the Game Boy games. Should they be on the Switch? Maybe they shouldn't? I don't know. You tell me. And until next time, see you later!